That's the Anglican way of saying, let's be quiet because we've got to start doing something. We're already late. The Lord be with you. Let's pray. Lord, thank you. Thank you that you are here. Thank you uh, for your presence and your power. Thank you for your cleansing. We cleanse this space, this property, this room for your purposes. We just ask, Lord, that you would come, wash us free of anything the enemy would want to take from us, and set us free for your kingdom work, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Let's stand and sing.
Oh, bless you, God. Worship you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom. Now, now and forever. forever. Amen. And together let's pray. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ says. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Almighty and everlasting God, you are always more ready to hear than we to pray and to give more than we either desire or deserve. Pour down upon us the abundance of your mercy, forgiving us those things which our conscience is afraid and giving us those good things for which we are not worthy to ask ex except through the merits and mediation of Jesus Christ, our Savior who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen.
Worship the Lord as the cello plays. I believe that the spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus. That's what it says in his word. And I believe that even as the cello plays, Holy Spirit is testifying to us right now of who he is. So Lord, would you come? We make room for you to speak. 
speak right now to our hearts. Holy Spirit, reveal Jesus. Jesus, reveal the Father. We want to lift you up in spirit and in truth. couldn't hear and those at home, a word was just given. I want to pour out my oil. I am not lack in giving my oil. Ask for the oil. You must get oil. Lord, we say we want your oil. We want your oil we would be burning and shining lamps. Thank you for your counsel to go buy oil. Show us, Lord, what it costs. We want it all, Lord. We are asking for your oil today. like the Lord is saying that today he is healing hearts and <clears throat> he speaks to me in pictures and I see like a, a raw wound and in the picture he's taking a, a white 
very light covering and putting it over our hearts, those who are hurting. Mm -hmm. And he's also calling us out of the darkness into the light. Mm -hmm. So Lord, I do pray that you would continue to heal hearts. Mm -hmm. Lord, those who are broken, those who are hurting, Lord, mm -hmm. those who are grieving, that Lord, you would lay that beautiful white covering of comfort on our hearts Lord, yes, Lord. and bring us out of darkness into light and we praise you that thank you in jesus, jesus name amen thank you lord thank you jesus Jesus. Thank you, Lord. One of the places in our hearts that can be wounded is called a father wound. Mm -hmm. Because fathers are human, and not all fathers are attentive to their children. Mm -hmm. Some of them are workaholics. Some of them are addicted. Some of them don't know how to express feelings to their children. And those of us who had experienced that kind of a father have a father wound. But when Jesus taught his disciples to pray, he told them to pray, our father. We have a good father a really, really good father. Mm -hmm. And he told us that God, the Father, so loved the world. Not he just loved the world. He so loved the world. Mm -hmm. And that means he loved you, he loved me, and he is the good father. So receive the good father. He loves you in a way that you've never been loved before. Thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Just receive the Father's love. you are a good father, a good shepherd. Just release that healing right now for the heart all across the room. And make room for you, Holy Spirit. that's you and you just feel like I think that might be me but I don't even know how to let the love of a father in to my heart I just encourage you to just say I give you access to my heart I open the door to just come in he knows you better than anyone He's good. The only one who's fully good. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness. We're just waiting on the Lord. Keeping our eyes on Him. part of our worship to just let him move on our heart because he wants our hearts.
think for some of us we have to give the battle to the Lord. And where our hearts are hurt, it might be in the battle. The battle belongs to him.
Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. If you could be seated. We're going to have the, um, the kids who are going off to Sunday school come forward because our teenagers are going to share what they heard from the Lord and how they experience what the Lord is doing. So kids for Sunday school, just come on up front here. Come on up front. A little different, something a little different. You'll go off to Sunday school in a second, but I wanted you to be able to hear the, our older students, uh, their experience of what God did while they were away on mission. So if you want to sit down on the floor, you can sit down on the floor. And then those who are going to come share for uh, from the mission trip, why don't you come down and, and share with us? I need to turn my mic on. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> I just thought you were flapping your wings over there, you know. All right, so I'm going to let you all go ahead and share what this this is what our students learned while they were away on mission. I just got voluntold I'm going to go first, so bear with me on that. Um, what? Yay! Okay. Good morning. Um, first of all, I just want to say thank you for all of your um, prayers and encouragement that you gave all of us um, youth before we went on the missions trip. Um, that is greatly appreciated, um, and it's very important to us to know introduce that. Introduce yourself for those who don't know you. I introduce myself. Hi, <laughs> my name's Elisa. <laughs> who am I? Child of God, all right? Uh, <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, but back to it. Thank you. That's a great, great benefit that we have from all of you to know that our family, our church, mm. is praying for us when we're out and about. Um, I think what God has really been doing for me this past mission trip was I kind of got a reawakening because I was like, it's going to be the same as it was last year. No, <laughs> it was not the same as it was last year, and that's good. Um, it was important. It was a new challenge, a new adventure, new things that I learned, um, one being that God's always faithful, Regardless of my strength at the time, whether I think I'm weak, whether I think I'm strong, God's still going to work, and that his word won't return void. Your labor is not in vain when you do things. There is things happening regardless if you see it or not. Um, so we got to help with people, um, Japuzo, or the Jesus people. Oh, there's pictures. Yeah, so there's pictures behind us. Um, we got to help with a group called the Jesus people. Um, in Chicago, and it was a great experience. I think they were really great examples um, for me personally on what it means to live sacrificially and live with unconditional love without any restraints for people. Um, they really taught me what it means to give up everything for Christ and to live with the same love that he did, reaching out to every single person, whether that person is homeless, whether that person's in their community, whether that person's just your person standing next to you in line for coffee. All those people are important. All those people are worthy of God's love. And that's something that they demonstrated so beautifully while we were there. And I feel like God was just really pouring into my life and teaching me what it means to give up everything for Christ and to live with, without restraint for others and to love them like Christ did. Um, some of the things that we did by doing that was um, helping at a shelter, we painted a smoke room, which is painful. It's really, really hard if you don't know. Smoke leaves, yeah, there we are. We painted it and we cleaned it. Um, and I feel like it was just a blessing to watch the women around the shelter say how much they were thankful for um, our service. And that only impacted me, but it also showed me just the smallest things that you do or the smallest things that you think you're doing really make a big deal in people's lives. And... It was a really beautiful experience. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much what I have. God did a lot of good things, um, regardless if I thought that they were happening. Um, when I take a step back and look at it, God had been faithful the whole way through from us getting in the van and to us coming back. His hand was interwoven in, in all the things that we did. Um, and there was very specific places this time that I could say, God worked here, God moved there. And to me, that's just just more testimonies of his goodness. 
You're next. I don't know how to top that off, but um, I didn't prepare anything. Sorry about that, Andrew. Uh, <laughs> um, but my name is Angela. Um, I guess the big takeaway I had from this trip was um, I was a little nervous because I don't know if everybody knows, but last year I ended up in the hospital the second day of the missions trip. So I was pretty nervous about what would happen, but um, God protected me, he kept me safe, um, and I'm here on two legs, so yay! <laughs> um, but the biggest thing that I just saw throughout the missions trip was how these people just loved each other and loved, <laughs> loved us. Um, from the moment we walked up there, we had um, the most amazing host, Tom, forgot his last name, um, just this amazing, God-fearing, loving man who just, he took care of us. He made sure we were okay. He, he, would, he would buy us snacks, which was amazing, because of course we needed snacks. Um, and we'd have these movie nights, and he would always ask us what kind of movies we were watching. Um, and it was just, it was great to see somebody like that who cared about us, even though we were just staying a week. Um, and just really, you know, took care of us. And we also got to meet this other guy. His name was Stuart. Best, best. We all love Stuart. He was, he was just amazing. This cute, cute little guy that would just follow us around. Um, um, and it was also, we also just, it was love from a lot of the, um, the homeless people we would help. You know, like Elisa said, the littlest of things, they would have the biggest smiles on their faces. Um, if it was cleaning the hallway, because that's something we would we did. And I remember I was so upset because I was sweating like crazy and there was no air conditioning. I'm like, why am I doing this right now? <laughs> but this person, they were walking down and they was just they were just so happy, you know, that we were doing something like that. Um, and it just made it all worth it. And also knowing that um, we're showing the love of God, we're being His hands and His feet was something truly truly worth doing. So yeah, that's all I have. But thank you. All right, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Josh Arbach. Um, for me, the big takeaway was help where you need, not where you want. Because mm -hmm. um, if I wanted to, I would have done all the heavy lifting, left everything for everyone else. Me and my cousin would have done all the heavy lifting if I wanted, not what I needed. The first day, uh, me and Elisa worked in the uh, kitchen, uh, and I was washing dishes. And I've watched this at home before. Um, <laughs> Once. <laughs> Once or twice. <laughs> uh, but I had to do it for 45 minutes straight. And it's not what I wanted to do, yeah. but it's what needed to be done. Um, so, and the smoke room, not what I wanted to have done, but what needed to be done. Hmm. And I'm thinking to myself, it's just gonna still be a smoke room. It's still gonna be like this again. But it still blesses the people anyway. So, that's all I got. All right, thank you. Thank you guys. Well done, thank you. We're blessed for your, your uh, time and that you, the Lord spoke to you and we'll pray that those words that he spoke into you just continue as you grow in him. And as we pray for you guys, as you head downstairs for Sunday school, we pray that God would pour his spirit into you and grow you into the full stature of Christ. Amen? Amen. All right. Got a few announcements this morning. Um, Copley Heritage Days, we decided for our summer outreach to, to join Copley Heritage Days, and there's still some spots, and there's lots of people here, so... Uh, if you'd like to help, we need help uh, on Friday evening putting up um, signs for the booths and for uh, parking. We need uh, folks on Friday night as well helping with the tournaments going on at, at Brighton Brewery. Uh, lots of spaces on Saturday as well. So I'm going to pass this around. If you have freedom this coming weekend and you're able to help, please sign up. Um, we'd love to be able to bless the community and say St. Luke's has shown up in force to be a part of this. Um, our friend Dawn Gaston is back and she's free and she's not here with us this morning because she didn't get a ride. 
And um, so, uh, Diana, would you be willing to receive some calls to sort of coordinate that? You know, as people are coming in, um, just call Diana Pallotta if you're interested in picking her up. She's just down the road from here, but she just loves to worship with us, wants to be here with us. Uh, so if you, you have the ability to pick up Dawn, uh, contact Diana, and she'll give you the information, and we'll get her here for Sunday services. Uh, our life groups at St. Luke's are a place where we can grow uh, as disciples of Christ in the context of relationships. It's in these relationships that we get a chance to do what you don't do at coffee hour on Sunday morning. So it gets, gives us a chance to be genuine and vulnerable and care for each other and spur one another on and pray for one another. They're going to start again in September. If you're interested uh, to join one of the life groups or you'd like to start a life group, you'd love to lead a life group, let us know. Uh, you can register for a group online, uh, but you can also contact either Father, Father Andrew or myself, and we'll get you uh, locked into a group or set you free to be able to lead a group. Let us know. Um, Akron Pregnancy Services is in need of clothing. Uh, size is 2T and 4T, or up to 5T, actually. If you'd like to donate clothes toward the purchase uh, or, or money toward the purchase of clothing, That'll be collected up over the next few weeks. Uh, you can put those clothing items in the box that's out in the entryway, uh, and we'll deliver them to APS. Yes? Uh, I think gently used are welcome, as well as new. Um, preferably new, but gently used is fine, as long as there's no stains or anything. It's just, uh, very, like we say, gently used. Um, Alter Guild needs bakers. Do you bake and would be willing to bake uh, communion bread? Um, bakers willing to, to make loaves of bread will be used for communion on Sunday. And if you're interested in helping Anita Marks, you mind wait, raising your hand so people know who you are? Um, see Anita and uh, you'll become part of the baking crew. Today uh, is the end of our raffle for, um, for stage four. And we're grateful for those of you who have participated in that ministry. And I'm um, going to tell you that the Fultons are the winners of the summer fun uh, basket. So it can just stay in your office, I guess. <laughs> Lastly, and, and uh, a little bit on the bittersweet side, I'm going to ask Ev and Phyllis to come up and share. We, we helped move them a little bit yesterday. Uh, I'm sure they are wiped out today from all that they did. Um, but they're moving close to Youngstown, which puts them too far away to come and join us on Sunday mornings. But they've meant so much to us over the years. We've got a little cake to add to the dessert that was already planned out there just to say... Uh, Bon voyage. Uh, not goodbye, but we'll see you when we see you, because I'm sure they'll come and visit. But I want to invite them up to share whatever the Lord's put on their hearts. We have been blessed to be a part of St. Luke's these many years. We have seen God at work. We have grown in the Lord, and I, I personally have grown as a seer and have been privileged to see God at work through his angels and his presence here. Mm. Um, <clears throat> he loves all of you as saints. <laughs> when my sister Peggy was with us, she had head knowledge, but not heart knowledge. But one Sunday, when Pastor Mike was preaching, he said, we have to believe. And she raised her hand and said, I believe. I, I think she came into heart knowledge. We are, we are, um, we have been blessed. So, thank you for caring for us, and we will miss you. Mm. Uh, that, take your time. This isn't easy, yeah. <laughs> because we have been privileged for, I think it's about twenty years now to. Uh, live among a group of people who do not just have head knowledge about the Lord Jesus Christ, 
but who live out the Lord Jesus Christ that is in them. Thank you. Thank you for living your faith. Uh, continue to do that. We will take what we have learned from you and hopefully have the privilege of sharing it with others. Thank you so much. Don't go far. I'm going to let the tears flow a little bit more as we, as we pray for you. Let's reach out a hand and just pray a blessing over the Schleifs. We love them, Lord, and we just ask for your grace and your spirit to fill them and pour out on others as they have all these years. That uh, in the area surrounding um, Youngstown, they would find themselves um, just continuing to grow in grace and love and strength. It is bittersweet, Lord, but we send them out um, and ask that you would make them uh, pillars in that community there, that they would know your presence and they would walk in it, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Dan. Love you guys. Let's turn our attention now to the reading of God's holy word. And then they asked me to read Kings 3. This isn't an easy one either. Solomon loved the Lord, walking in the statutes of David his father, only he sacrificed and made offerings at the high places. And the king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there, for that was the great high place. Solomon used to offer a thousand burnt offerings on that altar. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, Ask what I shall give you. This rings. And Solomon said, You have shown great and steadfast love to your servant David, my father because he walked before you in faithfulness, in righteousness, and in uprightness of heart toward you. And you have kept him for this great and steadfast love and have given him a son to sit on his throne this day. And now, O Lord my God, you have made your servant king in place of David my father, although I am but a little child. I do not know how to go out or come in, and your servant is in the midst of your people whom you have chosen, a great people, too many to be numbered and counted for multitude. <laughs> Give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people, that I may discern between good and evil. For who is able to govern this, your great people? It pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked for this. And God said to him, Because you have asked this, and not asked for yourself long life or riches or the life of your enemies, but have asked for yourself understanding to discern what is right, behold, I now do according to your word. Behold, I give you a wise and discerning mind, so that none like you has been before you, and none like you shall arise after you. I give you... Also, what you have not asked, both riches and honor, so that no other king shall compare with you all your days. And if you will walk in my ways, keeping my statutes and my commandments, as your father David walked, then I will lengthen your days. This is the word of the Lord. The psalm for today is Psalm 119, verses 121 through 136. 
I have done what is just and right. Do not leave me to my oppressors. Give your servant a pledge of good. Let not the insolent oppress me. My eyes long for your salvation and for your fulfillment of righteous promise. Deal with your servant according to your steadfast love and teach me your statutes. I'm sorry. I am your servant. Give me understanding that I may know your testimonies. It is time for the Lord to act, for your law has been broken. Therefore, I love your commandments above gold, above fine gold. Therefore, I consider all your precepts to be right. I hate every false way. Your testimonies are wonderful. Therefore, my soul keeps them. The unfolding of your words give light. It imparts understanding to the simple. I open my mouth and pant because I long for your commandments. Turn to me and be gracious to me, as is your way with those who love your name. Keep steady my steps according to your promise and let no iniquity get dominion over me. Redeem me from man's oppression that I may keep your precepts. Make your face shine upon your servant and teach me your statutes. My eyes shed streams of tears because people do not keep your law. This is the word of the Lord. Everybody. Good morning. I've been gone for the last two months because I fell and broke my thumb in five to six places. And I had a cast on, and it, I, it, it's been a mess. But anyway, I'm on the mend, and I'm back, and I'm so happy to see so many of these faces. I, I've missed you all so, so much. So I'm pleased and honored to read the New Testament lesson for today. It's Romans chapter 8, verses 26 through 34, one of my favorites. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know what to pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. And he who searches hearts knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good, for those who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that he might be the firstborn among many brothers, And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, How will he not also with him graciously give us all things? He who shall bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? Christ Jesus is the one who died. More than that, who was raised, who was at the right hand of God, who who indeed is interceding for us all. This is the word of the Lord. Word of God, speak. Would you pour down my grave? Washing my eyes to see your majesty to be still and
This is the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus put another parable before them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a grain of mustard seed that a man took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all seeds, but when it has grown, it is larger than all the garden plants and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like leaven that a woman took and hid in three measures of flour till it was all leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field which a man found and covered up. Then in his joy, he goes and he sells all that he has and he buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls who on finding one pearl of great value went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and gathered fish of every kind. When it was full, men drew it ashore and sat down and they sorted the good into containers, but they threw away the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the fiery furnace. In that place, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord. Lord Christ. Wow. So much has been said and read already. I should just sit down. Can I get an amen? Amen. I don't, I don't want to miss the fact that God has already spoken today because I think we had a string of words that really tied together in an important way. And that is, um, we heard Mary say, fill your lamps, get all the oil that you can. There's an urgency in our age and a time right now that we, we ought to be prepared. We ought to be prepared for the conversations that we're having with one another, that we might direct people to Christ. We ought to be prepared for whatever comes our way so that we might be ambassadors of Christ. And I think we got a hint at what some of the things that stand in the way at that is, that there's a wound. There is a wounding that we don't deal with, uh, that, that some of that is a father's wound. Uh, and... If there's anybody, I'm not, this is not me just sort of taking it on myself, but I just sort of have been aware in this season, the last couple of years, I've lost my earthly father, I've lost my spiritual father, I've lost my intercessory father, I've lost my brother, I've lost my father-in-law. There are, there's just this, dip, I want to say glut, um, but it's not really a glut, it's a vacuous hole of people in my life and I don't feel that empty I miss them like crazy but I know the father's love and I know that he has now called me called us not to take and turn that into an empty place that keeps needing to be filled and filled and filled with this anxious sense of loss but a sense of power because the Lord has called us now to live in his direct power and for us to walk in the fullness that he has given us. We are now the fathers and mothers in this culture, in this community, and we need to step into those things. I've found more and more in the last few months that I hear myself as well as others spend way too much time focused on what the enemy is doing and the sadness and brokenness and evil that exists and those things exist and they need to be cleansed but we need to focus on what the Lord is doing and and be ambassadors of praise you've heard me say several times before that uh, the name of the game in this life that we've been giving is displacement we need to spend more time 
having the presence and power and gifting and fullness of God displacing the things that are keeping us from living into the gifts that he's given. So that's, that's enough. I'll sit down now. No, I won't. <laughs> I feel like this morning as we look at our, the scriptures, they, they point to a, an end note. You could, you could feel it coming. We're reading Romans 8, and it's just like, and. Paul, Paul is uh, one of those writers that just writes in run-on sentences. I love him for that because I do too. He just has so much excitement in his writing about, and, 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 and the Lord said this, and, and the Lord's doing this. And, and this morning, you know, we, we get the same sense as he starts off his uh, this section that we're reading from Romans 8, ver- verse uh, 26 is likewise, sort of an and. The Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know what to pray for as we ought. And he's getting to this place where he says nothing, nothing can separate us from the love of God. And so I want to use an illustration that I found recently uh, from the, guy, the skit guys. Hey, uh, hey Tommy. Let Ready them for the Bible study? Talk yeah. about this. Did you do the homework for the Bible study? Yes. So, Tommy, look at me. Uh-huh. You answered all the questions for Romans 8, 38, and 39. Yes. Tommy. Mostly. Mostly. Well, the answer to the last question is not in the Bible. The answer to the last question, what can separate you from the love of God? It's in there. It's not in there. Yes, it is. Not in it's there. in there. It's no, in there. It's not. I would not give you questions. It's, if not, it's not, not in there. there. No, it's yes, not. No, it's not. not. Show me, Bible boy. All right, here we go. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are your ears open? Because yeah. here it is. Are oh, you yeah. ready? Can Girl, you handle this? Can you handle yes. this? Yes. I think I deserve it. I don't think you can <laughs> handle it. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Get ready. Here it is. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. See, it doesn't say. Yes, it does. No, it doesn't. It says nothing. Exactly. Uh, Yeah, you proved me right. No, you proved me right. Wait, what? Yeah, the something that you're looking for is nothing. Huh? Something is nothing. No, something is something. Something is nothing. No, nothing is nothing. Nothing is something. No, nothing is nothing and something is something. But something can't be nothing and nothing can't be something. But in here it is and it can. <laughs> <laughs> so you just want me to go in there and say nothing. Yes. Just be like nothing. Exactly. <laughs> and the specific nothing mm-hmm. is neither and nor. Oh. Fantastic. <laughs> yes. Neither nor. Nothing. <laughs> yes. Nothing, neither nor. Nothing, nor, neither, nothing, neither, nothing, nor. <laughs> so I'll just go in there and not say anything. No, I want you to say something. Then what is that something? Nothing. Oh, I want to hit you. What? Nothing. Yes. Nothing. Yes. Nothing. Yes. Nothing. Yes. Nothing. Yes. Nothing. Nothing. Right. Nothing. 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 Nothing? Nothing. Yeah, but you don't know my nothing. Doesn't matter what your nothing is. No. No, your nothing is nothing. My nothing is something. I've got a past. Just last night. Doesn't matter what you did last night or what you did five years ago. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. Nothing. It may seem silly, you know, at the, at the point where they're arguing over nothing. <laughs> but we realize that we get to the throne of grace and he says, so what do you have to show for yourself? Jesus Christ alone. We have, we have nothing. Just what he's done and given Paul, Paul, in his first eight chapters of Romans, as I've said before, sort of wraps up the whole of Christian theology, practically. All of, of systematic theology sort of gets spoken of in one way or another in these first eight chapters of Romans. And 
And in this chapter 8, when he's coming to this culmination of this teaching, he says, there's no condemnation for you who are in Christ. If you live by the Spirit, then stop living by the flesh. Amen. Stop being confused. Stop being twisted. Stop being uh, brought to death, because the flesh equals death and the Spirit equals life. Anyone who's at, without the Spirit uh, does not belong in Him. And if you belong in Him, you not only get the generosity and grace of the Lord, but He makes you an heir. You're a family member. You're wholly His. Our future is glorious because of what He has done. And, and as we look now to, to Romans 8, verses 26 and following, He says, So remember that the Holy Spirit meets us in our weakness. Do you see that turning point? He's like, but my nothing, huh, my nothing is something. My nothing is, is something that I don't want exposed. It's something that I, I don't want people to see. My nothing is uh, not only a stumbling block, but it's a barrier to me. And his friend says to him, Nothing means nothing. Nothing. Nothing can separate you if you yield yourself to the Lord. Then the Spirit walks and gives us strength in our weakness. He himself intercedes with groanings that are too deep for words beyond what we have scripted or what we have scribed as a language that we can understand. He searches our hearts and our minds and he intercedes for the saints according to the will of God's God's will for what is to be. So Jesus is with his disciples and he's teaching them through parables. And we heard it in the parable um, of the sower. And I said to you a few weeks ago, so generously. You, you have been given an opportunity, not only an opportunity, but a responsibility to take the love of Christ that is in you and plant it, not just one here and one here and one here, but to do as a sower would in those times is dig your hand deep into that bag of seed and throw it out there and not worry that you have to tend it or, or t care for its fruit or at the end of the season, prepare it for the next harvest, because your job is to sow. You may not get to be the harvester, but you'll know that what you've done with the Word of God is planted generously around you. So Jesus moves on to these other parables, and we hear from him in Matthew 13. Uh, he put another parable before them, saying the kingdom of heaven is like a grain of mustard seed. And this particular parable isn't always paralleled to what we heard with the parable of the wheat and the weeds, but you hear it unpacked in this way because it's on the flow of those parables that have already been spoken. You have this tiny little mustard seed, and it becomes this giant plant where all the birds come and rest and are cared for and given shelter. And there's an implication in this word that that's not just all of the church people that get to come and gather. It's not just the neat and tidy people. And I would say sometimes the neat and tidy people aren't always the church people. And the people that don't feel like they're welcome in church are the people who get to rest in the shade of this as well. And the Lord is giving a message to us in the same way that he did with the wheat and the tares, or the wheat and the weeds. I will do the sorting. I'll do the sorting. If you have a, a life that is consumed with the flesh of judgment, then you might end up being pulled up, torn out, along with the weeds. You might be one who is uh, seen as not living out the faith that you've been given, living out by the Spirit, but living out by your flesh. The kingdom of heaven is uh, like leaven that a woman took and hid 
in three measures of flour till it was all leaven. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field, and we heard it today. The man goes out and he buys, sells everything he can to be able to buy that field. Why? Because that one treasure that's found is worth more than anything else. And oddly enough, you would think that that's our job to go find the treasure, and we do find that treasure in Jesus but really, the application of that parable is also on us. Jesus has found you to be his treasure. And he's willing, the Lord, the God of the universe, has been willing to give up everything so that we can say, well, no, we worked hard, Lord, and we have great kids, and we have this house, and we have two cars, and, and a motorcycle, and a dog, and we've been good to our neighbors. And he says, no, you have nothing. You have nothing. None of that amounts to anything except for what you are in Christ and how you have responded in those places. So fill your lamps with oil. Find that place that needs to be healed and allow the Lord to heal it and start living beyond that healing. Allow him to take those strengths and build them so that he might, um, David came up to me early in those words and he said, you know, as we receive the Father's love, he just got a sense this morning before any of these words were spoken that the Lord was saying he was going to protect and, and heal the chest. And the, the reality is, you know, when you put on armor, you put on this place where your heart is protected, the Father's heart is protected. You're given the strength to do and be what you're called to be because the enemy is trying really hard to get in. The enemy is trying really hard to plant seeds that are counteractive to the seeds that you're sowing in your life and in the people around you. So when we hear the, the word of God this morning with these parables from the, the gospel message that Jesus has placed out there, we understand that the kingdom of heaven is really God's harvest that will come in and it'll come in like a net full of fish. And there are good fish and bad fish. And we don't need to necessarily worry necessarily about what fish that are gathered in because God will do the sorting. Our job is to bring and care for and tend to the ocean, <laughs> to tend to the people that are around us. To, to share the good news of the gospel, to be able to not be dissuaded by the, the distractions of the enemy or uh, what we perceive is something that is nothing. Because God can even take what is perceived as nothing and grow it into the largest plant there was, the mustard tree. So we've got to get our perspective. This morning, the Lord, as we were preparing for worship, said, I care about the small things. We oftentimes are worried about the big picture. And we find ourselves distracted and, and a little dismayed because we can't fix our finances or we can't fix the health problems that are going around us or we can't fix the, the, the lives that drive us crazy. And we miss the details. And God cares about the details because in the finite moment of a word of encouragement, you might change the flow of somebody's life. You might completely change what the, your day looks like if you're about the work that the Lord wants to do. If you so generously uh, and, and you're willing to ask the Lord in your prayer, Lord, how can I be yielded to you? How can I fill my lamp today? so that I can give light to those that are around me. How can I be prepared for whatever's coming? He'll do it. He'll give you opportunities that you didn't see coming. He'll, he'll allow you to see and hear. And even if you miss it, I love this about the Lord, is when you, when you think that you're prepared and you think that you are following his lead, uh, you'll sort of go, oh, that was, that was for me, wasn't it? You wanted me to say something today to that person. You wanted me to, to give up the cash that was in my pocket, and I was so attached to it that I, I thought, these thoughts that I have, just like I, I would say other people have, but I'll keep it on myself. 
you drive by that person with the sign and you go, well, they're just panhandling for something that I don't want to contribute to. I don't want them to, to spend it on drugs or alcohol, so I'm not going to give them my cash. And I've already made a judgment. I've already passed a decision about what's going on in that moment instead of just saying, let the weight of the Lord deal with that. And if the Lord's asking me to give, to give. If the Lord's asking me to operate out of wisdom and not give at that moment, the one I should be listening to is not my wishful thinking about my cash, but what the Lord wants me to do. Give it to them or not. So this morning as we're hearing all of these words, I just I f I feel like it, it shifted in what I had prepared because it just kind of, I feel as though culturally, I'm not talking about anything specifically, but it's so illustrated in this political stuff that's going on right now. We are so bombarded with information and misinformation. People are trying to be confused that we shut down. And instead of going and being clear about the small things and caring about the people that are around us, we just protect ourselves and our world. And the Lord really wants for you and I to be in a place where when we operate in the Spirit, as it says in uh, Romans today, that if we operate in allowing the <clears throat> Holy Spirit to intercede for us, then we will know what the Spirit wants. We'll be able to function in a way as we're yielded to the Spirit. We might, we might conform ourselves to the words that the Lord wants to transform us with. I, Romans 12, uh, verse 2, is a verse that is long spoken to me. Uh, do not conform to this world, but be transformed by a renewing of your mind. I memorized it a long time ago. I'm like, that's right. I need to not allow myself to be conformed. And I spent a lot of time focusing on that part of the word. But the rest of the word says, so you may know. So you may know the pure and perfect will of the Father. It doesn't end there. We stop our conformity to the world. We stop allowing us to worry about whether or not we're a wheat or a tear, or whether we're, you know, we're being infected by the world. You take the infection, forgive the analogy, of the Lord and his blessing and pour it out on everybody else that you have. Let the light of Christ shine so clearly upon everybody and everything that's around you that they might know that they've come in contact with something different than what the Lord, but what the world has to offer. The beauty of this is that when we focus on this kind of understanding in, of the Holy Spirit moving in ourselves, we know with certainty that we are sanctified. We know that we're okay. We know that Nothing can separate us. That's coming next week, I know. Um, but I, I couldn't help but use that illustration this morning because I think we've just got a sense that Paul's on a trajectory toward this end note where he says nothing can separate us. Sanctification is certain in us because we know intuitively that all things work together for the good. Does that mean all things work as we want them to? Does that mean all things are answers to our specific prayers? I find more often that the Lord shifts my prayer. As I'm praying for something or someone, he, he likes to weed out the, the Dan in that prayer. He likes to take out the, um, the expectations that I might have so that his pure and perfect will that I'm still learning to discern is lived out so that all things work together for his good, for the good, who, are, who have been called according to his purposes. See Paul's explanation here of what is God's purpose is that we experience the benefit that God wants to give the believer. We're not just receiving 
the things that we think are good, but the things that God wants to accomplish in and around and through us. Because that, because we are sanctified, we are also called, we are also justified, we will also be glorified with him. This is the hope and the certainty that we have and the life that he's calling us to. So when we read this passage and we get to the end of it and we understand the fullness of what God is doing, we say, who is to condemn? Jesus Christ is the one who died. More than that, who is raised, who is at the right hand of God, who will indeed, who, who indeed is interceding for us. If Christ is for us, who can be against us? I hope that speaks to your heart this morning because if there's a, a father wound, a, a place, one thing that my father used to say all the time, and I think all fathers do, but it, it is the source of much wounding is, oh, I'm not angry. I'm just disappointed. And then instead of living for what we know to be right and good, we live to please the father the earthly father, and we operate out of the flesh again and again and again. But if our focus for, I pray, what I pray our earthly fathers might be doing to develop in us good seed of God's word, if we are more focused on doing the word of the Lord, our earthly fathers hopefully would come along. We would bring honor to them by doing what the Lord wants us to do. So as we hear, as you hear these words of, and we live in a culture that is really struggling with, with justice and righteousness, seek to do what the Father has called you to do. Seek wisdom as Solomon sought wisdom so that he might know, we might know the fullness of what God wants to do. It's, it's very clear. You know, when I, when I, when I look at um, what is in our culture today, we get confused by um, we get confused by the loudest voice, the squeaky wheel. But I will say, the Lord makes it very clear where we can stand for biblical principles, and we don't have to be the loudest voice in the room. We don't have to be standing and pounding our fist. We don't have to have signs out in front of our house. We just have to do justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with our God. Amen? So remember, today, the very thing that you have to give to this world is Jesus. The very thing that you have to stand and account for the place that you have in his holy family is Jesus. But you have nothing from this world. You have nothing to be able to offer him, just a gratitude, a a finality of his displacement of what is of the flesh in our lives so that you might live by his spirit. Amen? Amen? Let's pray by saying the words together of the Nicene Creed. Please stand. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. 
and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophet. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let's pray for the church and the world as our hearts and voices proclaim our desire to see you move in our midst. We pray, Lord, for peace, that the world would operate in your presence, apply your love, and live in unity until we are called into your heavenly kingdom. We pray for our archbishop, our bishop, our priests, and our deacons. We know that we are connected to a larger fellowship sphere of influence than just our church, St. Luke's. And we pray that we would be unified in our purpose and ministry so that people would be drawn to your transforming love and kingdom purposes. We pray that your word would go out to the ends of the earth. We pray for all believers to have a hunger for your word and to seek to teach and disciple others from it. Yes, Jesus. We pray for believers and missionaries who are persecuted for their faith. Protect them, Father. Give them what they need. We pray for you to call our nation back to you and for those in authority and in public service that they may seek your face and do your will. We pray for the broken, the anxious, the depressed, the ill, the recovering, or any form of physical or spiritual oppression. Help. Help. We pray for those who grieve the loss of loved ones. We thank you, Lord, for the hope of heaven, and we entrust those who have passed to your eternal care. Father God, we lift our hearts to you in prayer, trusting our hopes and our hearts' desires to your response. May we continue to give thanks for your continued hand upon our lives and that our hearts and minds would be aligned with your will as we pray to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen. Let us humbly confess our sins to the Lord. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name, amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who in his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all those who sincerely repent and with true faith turn to him, have mercy on you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to the everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our word here excuse me hear the word of god to all who truly turn to him come to me all who labor and are heavy laden and i will give you 
God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have the peace of the Lord be always with you. Let's take a moment to exchange the peace of God to those within five feet of you. Let's all begin to come back together, dear brothers and sisters. Ordained confusion, it's great. The Lord still be with you. (laughs) If we could begin to come back together, have a seat. There was a word uh, picture that I felt the Lord was giving me today that ties in so much with all that's been said and a wonderful word from uh, Father Dan. And uh, I was having a conversation with someone today uh, when I came in about cataracts. And and, uh, I don't know if you've had the experience of having a cataract removed, but but one of the things I start to realize is, is that you, you get so used to seeing things the way they are. You don't know any better. And the cataracts, when they form, it happens very slowly. You, you don't really see it happening. But, but then there's this moment when you're, you're driving on the road on a snowy night, and the lights are coming at you, and you, you can't see anything, and you think, there's something wrong with my vision. And, and you find out it, it's a problem with cataracts. And, and so you, you go and you, you have the old lens removed and you have a new lens put in. And, and, and I remember after the surgery, looking around with my first, my right eye that I could then had the surgery and, and I went, Northeast Ohio is so bright. <laughs> it, it, it's, I, I saw it before, but, but I, I really didn't grasp it. And, and, but, but when I got the new lens, then I could see things the way they really are. And the sense I had this morning was that as we celebrate Holy Communion today, that this is a day for some of us that the Lord wants to remove 
our old lens of how we see the Father, of how we see Jesus, of how we see the Holy Spirit, of how we see the kingdom of God, of how we see the church, of how we see ourselves. And, and he wants to give us the, the special lens that only he can give. And that as he does it, all of a sudden, we say, I, I, I saw the Father before, but, but now I really see the Father. I saw the Son before, but now I really see the Son. I, I knew the Holy Spirit before, but now I, I really see the Holy Spirit. I saw the church before, but now I really see the church. That as we celebrate Holy Communion today, and the Lord comes to us through the bread and the wine, that he's going to give us some new lenses for us who are tired of our old lenses. And, and, and he's going to take out the old and put in this new lens and, and get ready to receive who the Father, the Son, and the Spirit really are. To know that nothing can separate us Thank you, Lord. from his love. Amen? Amen. Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each one must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves who? Amen.
sing out open. All things come to you, O Lord. And of your own have we given you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right in our delight, in our duty, in our joy, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had sinned against you and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent your only Son into the world for our salvation. By the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, he became flesh and dwelt among us. In obedience to your will, he stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself once for all, that by his suffering and death we might be saved. By his resurrection, he broke the bonds of death, trampling hell and Satan under his feet. As our great high priest, he ascended to your right hand in glory, that we might come with confidence before the throne of grace. On the night that he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, Jesus took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. That's you. Therefore, we <laughs> proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. And we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your word and Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Sanctify us also that we may worthily receive this holy sacrament and be made one body with him so that he may dwell in us and we in him. And bring us with all your saints into the fullness of your heavenly kingdom where we shall see our Lord face, face to face. face. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses trespass against us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever <clears throat> Alleluia, Christ our Passover has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, Therefore let us keep, keep the feast. feast. Alleluia. Together, we do not presume to come to this your table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your abundant and great mercies. Apart from your grace, we are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord whose character is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body and our souls washed through his most precious blood and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you 
and feed on him in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving. Please be seated. As you come forward, I'll try to make this less confusing. As you come forward, uh, I'll place a small piece of the consecrated bread in the palm of your hand. And for those that receive the bread, you can go to my right where there will be this metal chalice and you receive the bread directly first and then you can receive a sip of the consecrated wine. For others, there are wafers. And um, if you would like to receive a wafer, you let me know that and I'll put a wafer, consecrated wafer in your hand and you take it over here and there's this chalice like this and you simply dip it lightly into the um, consecrated wine and receive it that way. Now, there's a third option <laughs> because we do it your way. <laughs> I'm sorry, that, that was bad. <laughs> My wife would say I got carried away on that. Um, there are these uh, sealed uh, grape juice and uh, uh, wafers that are packaged, and you can also ask to receive one of those if you prefer and receive communion that way. Father, we pray that as we receive communion today that, Holy Spirit, you would be released in us, that you would give us new lenses, that we would see you, Jesus, we would see you, Father, we would see you, Holy Spirit, clearly and without um, any disruption in our spiritual eyesight. Let us meet the Father, the Son, and the Spirit today. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.
Please stand as we give thanks to the Lord for having fed us today. Heavenly Father, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, Savior Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out into the world to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Not on purpose, but uh, probably part of the flesh. I skipped a couple announcements. One is there are veggies out in the uh, cafe that are there for the taking. The Neffingers have gotten uh, an abundance given to them, and every once in a while they'll put it out in the cafe for you to take home. So please go check it out and go take it home. 
Secondly, but not unimportant, we have a vote coming up. And it's votes like this or the political stuff that go on in our culture as the bane of my existence because I, I have a spine, I could tell you exactly what my opinion are, is, but that's not my job. My job is to tell you to vote and speak your Christian conscience. We as a church stand for the rights to life. We as a church stands for the rights and love of people. We as a church care about what is going on in this community and the very best way forward for us to vote is a vote of greater unity, not lesser unity. So educate yourself. This is your pastor speaking. Get out there and read. There's disinformation coming from all sides. Get out there and educate yourself. See what, what other groups are, are saying. The Right to Life in North, Northeastern Ohio have a pamphlet, and some of them are out there for you to grab if you want them. Uh, get the, inf the right information, not what you're being programmed to vote for. And the words that have come to me this morning, John uh, Durhammer shared with me, he said, throw off the kingdom of this world so that we might live for the kingdom of God. Amen. Yes, is that right, Amen. John? And in doing so, he will heal our land. Hmm. And I was, was talking earlier, we're talking about how we displace things. I think if we are a people who in the midst of the anxiety of what's going on in our culture can turn it into praise and pray over our nation and pray over this election and we actually don't get frozen and not do anything but actually get out there and vote, mm. there might be something that, that comes of God's will for this. In the midst of it all, I really get a mm. sense that our job is not, as I was trying to say this morning and you could tell my brain was so distracted by so many other things <laughs> going on, the Lord wants to heal our tongue. Mm. Got a word this morning sent to me that he wants to uh, heal what we say, that we could break off the fear of speaking. We're afraid to not, we don't want to offend anybody. So mm -hmm. let's, let's break off that fear of offense and not stop worrying about being different. And I'll ask God to, to heal us so mm. that those who haven't spoken, there's a voice that is silent and it needs to be spoken mm -hmm. uh, so it can be done so in his will without judgment or anger. If you watch all these ads that are flying right now, there's a lot of judgment and there's a lot of anger being thrown. So we can just go, I can't even deal with it. And we walk away and we don't vote. Mm -hmm. My prayer for you is that you be smart, that you'll educate yourself and that you'll activate your voice so that the world might know a Christian witness to the things going on in our That's civil good. culture. Amen? Okay. Amen. Amen. Back to you, sir. <laughs> so, all of our problems we send to the cross of Christ. All of our difficulties we send to the cross of Christ. All of the devil's works we send to the cross of Christ. And all of our hopes. May the Lord bless you, the Lord make his face to shine upon you, and be gracious to you, and the Lord lift up his countenance upon you, and give you peace, and may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you, and remain with you always, amen.
He shall return. He shall return in robes of light. The things inside shall pierce the light. And I Sorry, that verse is just, whoo, let's sing it one last time. He shall return in robes of white. The amazing sun shall pierce the night. And I will rest among the saints. My case transfixed on his beautiful face. Jesus. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. Go get him.